What's up, YouTube? Uh, Tim here. Um, it's Sunday morning. I'm about to head out to a party for my niece, and I decided to make a quick video um, because um, I noticed that uh, the views that I get, the, the few views that I get on my channel, um, have been related to um, butterfly knives, ballast songs. So I decided to make a video today about that instead of my leather crafting, which hopefully the leather crafting picks up because that's kind of what I'm into at this moment. Um, anyways, see here um, is a video about um, washers, bushings, and bearings. What's the difference? All right. So... For those of you who are new to the um, butterfly knife community, balisong community, there are three major types of um, uh, systems that you can get, rotating systems, if you will, um, that you can get with your knives. You can get um, standard washer-driven um, pins. You can get... Um, bushing, um, which they use um, a combination of washer and bushings, and there are bearings. Um, so, like anything that is um, of preference, um, you use your own judgment on what you like the best. Now, um, going into um, collecting these, um, I have a few examples. Um, out here, but going into collecting these knives, um, I guess I would I wouldn't have known the difference um, if you would have given me one of each when I first started off, you know, because the first thing that I learned on was the CCCs, the cheap Chinese um, crap, if you will, um, that everybody you know gets at a flea market or you know a novelty store or whatever, and um, those run on a um, just strictly pin system. You can't remove the screws or anything like that on there. Um, so um, I would have been like, well, these things are awesome either way. But once you flip a little bit, you can get like the feel for um, the difference. And when you get into tuning your own knives, that's when you really get the feel for it. Um, are you somebody who likes a little bit of play? Are you somebody who just despises blade rub? Are you somebody who likes the sound of the um, you know, uh, washers making kind of a metallic, uh, rubbing squeaking noise on your knife. I mean, it all depends. It goes with, um, you know, whether you're somebody who likes to um, run Zen pins or, um, uh, a tang pin, dual tang pin, whatever. But, um, you know, getting back to what I was talking about is, um, you know, the system that really drives the handles. So here... We have two um, washer-driven knives, the Kimura, I believe this is the Kimura 2. This was the first quality knife that I ever bought. And I don't think I'll ever get rid of this, I don't think I'll ever sell it. Um, you can't get them anymore, you can get them on second hand and people still, you can still get them for good deals. But um, this knife is, um, the tolerances on this are great, for especially for it being a washer-driven um, knife. Here is the uh, 63 and I have the aftermarket um, fly ties on here but um, if you actually purchase one of these from Blade HQ or, or wherever um, you're pretty much getting this knife <laughs> but you're paying three times what this one's worth. Well I shouldn't even say worth. Worth is kind of um, subjective but um, Yes, this has a sick looking blade profile with the buoy style and um, you know you have more options with this knife. Um, it's more you know well known, it's more regarded in the knife community but if I were to slap the stainless steel handles back on this and flip these together um, these handles yes are a little more rounded than this. This is more of a you know kind of a flat style, a thinner um, thickness, 
but overall the weight and the feel of the flipping i would put these with the stainless not with the fly ties but with the stainless handles on here as very very equal now you do get blade rub when these loosen up you can only tighten these so much until um, there comes a, a point of diminishing return where um, if you tighten them too, t too tight then it's not doing what it needs to do it doesn't flow freely and when you're doing tricks it's hard to um, um, you know do certain things uh, because it'll get stuck sometimes and you can actually cut yourself I've done that a few times because I actually like it to feel um, I don't like a lot of um, handle play um, and if you'll notice even with these on here that's the handle play with um, the 63 Benchmade 63 with the aftermarket handles and uh, the it pretty it's pretty when you put the stainless steel, it's pretty, the blade place is about the same, sorry. Um, and here is the Kimuras. So you could see, for a knife that I think I paid $85 for a while back, um, it's great. Oh, that sucked. I think I hit one of my knives. Hopefully it was the um, demon. <laughs> um, so if you can pick one of these up this is the perfect knife to start with but um there so that's uh so the moving along to a bushing system i have four here that have that run bushings and these are so very different these two are the best tolerances then uh the bare bones and then the um i don't know what gen i did a lot of experimenting on this knife here but um the bushing system on this demon is complete i don't it's n nowhere near as a quality as this basilisk r this thing virtually no blade pr play and you can really tighten these pretty good and you still get the si pretty much the same action as you would um, if you had a looser so um, you know you can see who has access to um, you know the best equipment and best materials not to say that um, the demon and uh, the gentleman who makes these can never catch up I'm sure he could at some point but I think there's more engineering that's gone on to the into this knife <clears throat> and if you compare the this is the DB1 um, or so, sorry, three. I'm thinking of 3.1. This is DB3. This is the first run they came out with, and I actually had a kit before, so I knew these were good. So I scooped one of them up right as soon as they popped out. But that, that's the tolerance, or that's the blade play on that. That's crazy. These are awesome. Um, you know, I think when the 3.1 came out, a lot of people bought them up, and they're kind of comparing them to, I don't know, maybe. The 51 and the TAC-3 aluminum, but uh, this knife blows both of those out of the water, in my opinion. Can't beat it. Um, and here is the uh, bare bones. Um, and, you know, you could see by the poor quality of the blade, um, work on here that this was all you know amateur but um, it still actually flips really well um, and uh, you can actually um, tighten these pretty good um, but again with the bushings there is a point where if you you don't get a little too carried away that you could um, cause yourself t uh, to get uh, free handles to get a little sticky and then um, cause injury um, or the worst case scenario is that you bust the heads off one of these, um, which if you belong to any blade forums or Facebook groups, you see that all the freaking time, which is really stupid. Um, and the last system here, we have bearings. Now, here is a knife that I was <laughs> that I really, really wanted when I first saw it come out. And if any of you are familiar with... Um, 
uh, battle songs and collecting them, you know the reputation that this knife has. Now for a EDC, you know, um, this is a sleek design, throwing it in your pocket um, and going. It's a really cool blade profile. Um, and uh, kind of the appeal was that um, it was running on a bearing system, but these bearings, um, the tolerance of the bearings are, um, you know, it's good for, again, for utility knife. Um, but the price on it, you, don't, you know, obviously don't want it to, to ding it up too, too bad. But flipping wise, man, at least it's the demon I keep hitting. Um, uh, flipping wise, this thing is probably um, with like a $45 Baron Sons um, pin construction because um, uh, you, you have to get one in your hand to feel. I mean, even right now, flipping it around here, you're probably like, oh, yeah, it's not bad. I take that. But um, I got to tell you, it um, is not as smooth as it sounds. Now, then the most experience that I have with bearing system is with the uh, Max Ace line. These are the best. Um, this is a Scorpius. It's probably the least popular model. Um, I was making a sheath earlier, so I had this one. My um, imitation uh, covenant feels much better because of the length and the weight and everything. I love that freaking thing. And it's got the, um, uh, I think, the steel bearing system. These ones have the, the uh, ceramic, I want to say. But uh, you can get these so tight you put those screws down so tight and you still I'm really squeezing on that there's no blade rub on these and um, at first when you first get these um, if it's a max ace or something of higher quality um, you can actually feel the difference uh, because you're used to flipping washers or bushings. Uh, but after a while, they break in, and um, as long as you oil them or lube them however you want, um, it, it starts to glide. And um, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, you can't beat the um, bearing system, as long as it's a good bearing system. Um, again, it's all preference, and as you can see with the Demon versus the uh, Basculus and the DB3, um, you know, it all depends on the workmanship that's gone into it. But anyways, that's my two cents on a few knives that I own here. Um, and hopefully you'll check out some of my other videos if you're into leather crafting. Anybody out there ever needs a build for um, a uh, sheath or any other uh, leather products, uh, give me a shout. Um, you can also reach me on Instagram at uh, Timothy Hammond. 3075 I think that's what it is anyways thanks for watching guys I'm gonna post this and take my dog for a run peace